while you know this revolution in nuclear physics was happening, they were understanding what happens inside the nucleus and what radioactivity is and what fission is. It was the chemists that figured it out. That's Eva Uribe, who studies nuclear chemistry and nuclear nonproliferation at Sandia National Laboratories. We're talking about those things because, well, they're on our minds. And we wanted to know how chemistry is helping those who monitor nuclear materials globally keep tabs on who has which materials and what they might be doing with them. Those are hard questions to answer, especially since the same nuclear materials used to generate electricity can also be used to create weapons of mass destruction. There's huge benefits and huge risks to having the stuff around. So let's start with what this stuff is. The key materials used for weapons are plutonium-239 and highly enriched uranium. That is, about 90% uranium-235, which enables nuclear fission chain reactions, and 10% uranium-238, which is the dominant form naturally. Uranium-238 doesn't really work as a weapon. Most nuclear reactors in the world run on low enriched uranium, with 5% or less of uranium-235 and the rest uranium-238. Those nuclear reactors produce plutonium-239 as part of their normal operations when the uranium-238 captures a loose neutron flying around the reactor core. So how can you ensure that this material is being used only for peaceful purposes, like power generation, and not for building a bomb? International inspectors use tools like isotope identification devices, surveillance cameras, and special seals that prevent unauthorized access to monitor weapons-grade materials that ought not go missing. Sometimes, however, material does escape regulatory control. Often it's simply mishandled, but it could also be stolen or intentionally diverted. If radioactive material is found somewhere it's not expected, nuclear forensic scientists can help identify the material, where it came from, and whether it was used for illicit activity. These scientists have a host of techniques at their disposal to understand the chemical makeup of a given material, like high-precision mass spectrometry to characterize its isotopic content, or electron microscopes to characterize a material's physical properties. It could be as simple as, as looking at the physical form of the material. And then beyond that, we can get more detailed, um, not unlike uh, what forensic chemists do um, uh, in, a, in a traditional sense, but we can look in more depth and look at the grain structure. John Schwantis is a nuclear forensic scientist at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. He told me that although these analytical tools are helpful to officials investigating a case of found radioactive materials, there's still work to do. The nuclear forensics community is currently working to better analyze and understand the trace elements that appear in nuclear materials, as well as develop tools that could reveal which reagents were used to process a material. We're not going to be the smoking gun that solves the case. We're going to be a, a small piece in a larger investigation. Schwantis works with material that is already in law enforcement's control. But international inspectors don't always have direct access to nuclear materials in operations, such as when a country is not granted access to its facilities. In those cases, being able to monitor nuclear activity remotely, say from several kilometers away, would be a valuable tool. We spoke with researchers at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and Brookhaven National Laboratory who are developing technology that senses subatomic particles called antineutrinos, which nuclear reactors emit as part of the fission process. The detector, which is called Watchman, could be used to monitor a large swath of territory and potentially pinpoint reactors making plutonium for weapons use, even if they were hidden among known reactors used to generate power. So you essentially account for the known reactors and you say, ah, wait, there's this extra little bright spot of extra antineutrinos that must be coming from an additional production capability. Adam Bernstein leads the Watchman project, which is currently under construction. Antineutrinos are very hard to detect, and in order to pick up signals from tens or hundreds of kilometers away, the Watchman team will need a very sensitive, very large detector. So the current design is massive, roughly 16 meters tall and 16 meters in diameter. The first generation detector will be filled with water doped with a little gadolinium, and it'll sense Cherenkov radiation, which you might recognize as the characteristic blue glow of an underwater nuclear reactor. But you can also detect antineutrinos using something called scintillation. In this situation, the subatomic particles collide with organic molecules and generate a flash of light. And a future generation of Watchman will combine those two detection methods. Team chemist Min Fang Ye tells us the dual band detection of the water bath combined with just a little bit of organic scintillator liquid would enable scientists to better separate interesting signals from background noise. Ye said the challenge was finding a way to mix the scintillator liquid with the water and some other necessary additives without the mixture separating or becoming cloudy, which would interfere with the transmission of the antineutrino signals. He also needed the liquid to be eco-friendly and mass-producible. 
His team experimented with several formulations before finding a potion capable of generating both Cherenkov radiation and scintillation light that fit those requirements. He's keeping the exact details a secret for now. We do know the organic scintillator Ye chose is commercially available, but that doesn't mean this is an easy project. I mean, when I first called a chemical company and say, all right, do you have uh, this chemical? They say, yes. Do you have it in uh, 100 tons? They say, do you mean 100 kilograms or 100 milligrams? <laughs> no, 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 no. So this is a very different kind of scale thing we talk about. So this is something very great uh, scientific motivation. And who would argue that global security isn't great scientific motivation? We've just scratched the surface here of how scientists are detecting nuclear events and monitoring nuclear materials across the globe. Let us know about the nuclear science that fascinates you in the comments, and check out the links below for even more information. Thanks for watching.